Hey guys, welcome back to our tutorial of Spring Batch and Spring Batch integration. Today we are going to talk about remote chunking. So, in order to follow up our series about scalability using Spring Batch and Spring Batch integration, you can find more videos related to multi-thread step. We covered the topic related to async processing and multi-thread processing with Spring Batch. Today, our focus will be remote chunking of a step. Before talking about remote chunking, let me just give you a little bit the context of what we are trying to solve here. Let's suppose that you have your traditional Spring Batch application. Your Spring Batch application has a job, the job has one or more steps, each step should have at least item reader, writer, and maybe processor, item processor, which is optional, if we are talking about chunk-oriented step. So the most common approach that engineers uh, try to implement in order to scale your Spring Batch application is sometimes to use the multi-thread, okay? So you give more thread maybe on the item processing or item writer, or sometimes people use the other approach called async processing, which is also good to scale your Spring Batch application. And they can also, for example, try to scale your server, like scale vertically, adding more cores with more power for your machine. So. This is the common and traditional approach. The remote chunking is a manager workers approach. So this is a good approach because we can scale our jobs. For example, we have the manager, which will be a single, uh, let's say process. Okay. And the worker can be multiple uh, instance of application. So how does it work here? We have the manager, the manager will read the data. For example, we can read from database, we can read a flat file, we can read from Kafka. So the manager is responsive to read the data. Once the data is read um, by the manager, the manager sends this data into a middleware system. In our case, we can just say like, for example, we can send it into Kafka. So here on the right side, we have the worker. So the worker or workers, okay, they're gonna handle this data. They're gonna receive the data. They're gonna process the data. If you have to do some filtering, some enrichment or something like that. And later they're gonna write the data into the outbound channel. Let's suppose that we are writing into database or we create a flat file and write the data into flat files or maybe we write into, I don't know, a REST endpoint or Kafka and so any outbound channel. Once the worker um, finish its work, okay, it sends back the contribution, okay, into Kafka. What is the contribution? It's like what the worker has done, the result of this processing, the worker will send back into Kafka and once again, the manager will read this data, okay? So uh, this is very nice because, for example, instead of having one single, uh, let's call it application doing all by its own, okay? And you, in some time, you cannot scale the traditional Spring Batch as we have here. Sometimes we cannot, you cannot scale this, uh, for example, having, um, more instances okay of the same application multiple instances of the same application maybe you cannot have this but here as we can see you can have multiple instances of your worker as for example we talk about kafka we have partitions in kafka and we have consumer groups in kafka so if you have for example here three partition and the word the manager reads the data and send for example some data into kafka with some partitions our consumer groups okay our consumers instances they will read from different partitions so it helps us to scale in different manners okay so even using the traditional approach here we can we can keep scaling for example heading the 
um, async processing and multi-thread inside of a single worker here. So resuming, remote chunking, the manager reads the data, sends into Kafka or any other middleware system, for example, RabbitMQ or Google, I don't know, uh, PubSub. The workers, they receive the data, they process the data and write the data. So once the job is done, the, the, the workers, they send data back to Kafka. It's not the data, uh, but it's the metadata, uh, the chunk data, okay, into, into Kafka. So the manager will receive and will understand if uh, uh, the workers have, have read, uh, filter, skip some lines or something like that, okay? And we have to understand also that only the manager has access to job repository. If you don't understand what is job repository, it's a very uh, simple concept in Spring Batch where we save all the metadata related to our job. So the manager is the only one responsible to save this data. Let's go now, let's implement our use case, okay, of remote chunking with managers and workers. Let's go.